All right, I think this is as good a time as any to start. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, just so you know you're in the right session, this is faster app development with Heroku add-ons. If you'd like to develop applications slower, uh, this is not your talk. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the, with the interest in this topic. Uh, I'd like to get a sense for uh, you know, who's here and why. Could you raise your hand uh, if you're a developer of, of apps? OK, great. Oh. So the majority, if not everyone. It's hard to tell with that light. Um, <clears throat> so you're probably here because of the promise of faster application development. Who doesn't want that? Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about how you can sort of accomplish that. Uh, if you're building applications on Heroku, you can use Heroku add-ons to save yourself some time. Uh, I'm sure, as you all know, if you've built at least one application and put it into production before, uh, the road from the start to, f to finish, if it's ever finished, is, uh, is one of much time and, and tears being spent. So uh, our aim is to reduce the time spent and the tear shed. See if we can make good on that. Um, can everyone see the slide? There's going to be a quiz on this later. Can you see this okay? I can email it to you. All right. You have all read this. I'm advancing. Uh, my name is Matthew Conway. Uh, I'm an engineer on the, the add-ons team at Heroku. Um, Heroku is, a, is part of the Salesforce platform. Uh, just in case you're not super familiar with Heroku, uh, like I said, this is a place for your applications. Uh, it's where you deploy your code and, you know, in one command. You're not setting up servers, that kind of thing. Uh, we're not all sysadmins as well as developers. Uh, so this, is, this platform's for you. It's, it's a platform for your customer apps. Uh, I liked it so much, I decided to stop using it and work on it, although I still use it. Um, and add-ons, which is, you know, kind of my wheelhouse. Uh, these are all these, uh, you know, some, some of these are provided by Heroku, some, most of them are third party. Um, this is pieces of infrastructure and, and, and tools and, and other, you know, extra systems that you might want to add to your, to your application to enhance its, uh, you know, its functionality or, like I, like I said, uh, the premise of this talk, to save you some time. Um, so now that you, is everybody pretty good on Heroku and, and, and add-ons and, and how that works, you can add them by uh, using the command line tool or from our addons.heroku.com marketplace, which I have a little screenshot of there. In one click or one you know, run at the command line, uh, you've got yourself a database or a cache or a monitoring solution um, added to your application. It's restarted and all of its configuration is made available. It's, it's a very, uh, very quick process. Um, so I'm going to take you, let me back up a bit. I'm going to take you through a, a bit of a you know, fake journey of an application. Let's say it's a customer app, and uh, you don't have a whole lot of time to build this, but it needs to get done yesterday. Uh, you need to get it out there and iterate quickly. You're looking to save yourself some time, uh, save yourself some effort ramping up developers in the project if, you know, if they kind of materialize as things go on. Um, add-ons is going to help you do that. I'm going to walk you through six different add-ons. That's sort of uh, the add-ons that you'll see as you go through these different stages of uh, the life cycle of your application from, from development to production. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a demo of each one of them uh, if all goes well. And uh, you know, because we're covering so many different types of these add-ons, it's fine if you want to ask questions as we go uh, for each add-on. That's OK with me. Just shout. Uh, I think there's a mic. <clears throat> First one I'm going to start with. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart because Heroku offers it. Uh, this is a relational database, Heroku Postgres, which is short for PostgreSQL. Uh, you're going to get this out of the box with any Ruby on Rails application you deploy to Heroku, which is very common. That's how Heroku started off, was hosting Rails apps, uh, Ruby apps back in the day. So you get this automatically. It's a relational data store. Um, it's a you know, secure database. We now offer encryption at rest and in transit. This is something you can cust uh, trust with your customer data. Uh, you can sync it with, you know, make it available in force.com via Heroku Connect. Um, that's now very fast. Um, with this database, you, you can, you, like a project on GitHub, if you're familiar with that, with where your code's on GitHub, you can fork that and edit your own copy of it. 
You can also fork our databases. You can set them up as a follower, so there are always tracking the changes in your primary database, but you can use as many of these followers as you like for um, distributing read traffic, that sort of thing. Um, this is much easier to set up than if you were to do all of this yourself. Um, another thing that you get out of the box are performance analytics. Um, so we give you some idea of what your slowest queries are, um, some problem areas to look at. This is going to help you from, you know, from early, early development where you're making these kinds of performance mistakes. We all do it. Um, and every application is a little different. Uh, so catch these early, that sort of thing. It's going to save you a lot of tears. Um, we give you continuous protection, so every change that you're making to this database is going to be right ahead logged uh, and stored away somewhere safe and, and guarded and all that sort of thing. Um, so you're not going to waste a whole lot of time recovering from should there be a disaster or something like that, you're all set. Um, and speaking of the inevitable, we have one step rollback. So if you're familiar with being able to roll back a Heroku application, you've pushed out some code. Um, you want to roll back to the previous version of that code because you deployed a mistake. You can do the same thing with this database. Again, that's going to save you some time and, and some frustration. Um, <clears throat> what happened there? Okay. <laughs> so I've got a demo app, which I've added all of these add-ons to. Um, I'm going to, uh, including Postgres, I'm going to show you... Uh, Bit of the Heroku Postgres uh, dashboard, if everyone can see that. I know it's a bit dark. Um, my list of databases is loading. All right. Show of hands, who's, uh, who's here for the first time in Dreamforce ever? Awesome. Who's here been more than three times? Nice. Wow. This is my second. Um, so let's see, we're having a bit of trouble loading. There we go. That's my database. <coughs> now, earlier, just to, uh, so I don't tempt the demo gods, if you will, I already ran the command to add this database to my application. It was Heroku add-ons add, Heroku PostgreSQL. I'm off to the races. Um, here's some information about the connection settings, should you want to connect to this outside of your Heroku app. Um, Credentials, like the password, are obscured here, but you can get to those as well. You can use our PGP SQL command to automatically connect to your database just based on your app name. Um, I haven't taken any snapshots yet. Uh, let's uh, show you data clips. Don't have any data in here. Um, just to give you an idea of what, of what data clips is, it's like a GitHub gist for for your data. Um, that's a, you know, just being a one-page kind of app where you can bring up a text area. You're writing in some code you need to share quickly. Uh, this is sort of that for your database. If you, you, know, you need to write a really quick query, um, you don't want to deploy any code that, you know, to wrap something with a model, um, just write some SQL. You can share this with your colleagues. You can export it so that it's uh, it's available to a Google spreadsheet, which you can then visualize with a chart. Um, in a lot of cases, you know, for me, this has replaced uh, offering some kind of API, uh, which would have taken me uh, certainly more time. Um, so if I have a hunch about some, uh, some relationship in data or I need to put together a list of people to contact because you know, some, something's shutting down for them, an add-on is shutting down, I'll just jump in data clips and I can pull out what I need and uh, use that JSON uh, represent, representation of the results um, you know, to power a script where I email all those people. It's a huge time saver. Uh, I don't have any data to, uh, that, I can, that I can share that I can query for you, unfortunately. But uh, just know that if you haven't used it yet, you're going to love it. Uh, so that's Heroku Postgres and data, and data Clips. This is essential. You're going you're almost uh, certainly going to have some kind of data store in your application. So um, let's see. But let's uh, let's move on. <clears throat> so you're getting well into development now. Um, it's fine if you begin by you know doing everything um, on the back end in reaction to uh, 
you know, requests coming into that application in process. Let's say someone has uh, submitted a form. They're trying. To, they've, you know, seen what you've written on your, uh, on your application, teasing them, getting them to sign up for this product, that sort of thing. They enter their details. You could fire off an email to them right away. You could make them wait for that to happen. Maybe it's fast. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe the external um, mail delivery service is not available at all, and they get a bad experience. Um, that's going to be okay maybe at first in development, but as you go through the app's life cycle, you know you're going to be looking for these opportunities to, um, to make sure it's a speedy experience by the time you go to launch. And one way you can do that uh, is to add a, you know, background jobs. The way I like to do that is I add the reddish green add-on. Um, and so I'm backing uh, my application with the job queue uh, that's powered by Redis. Um, so instead of making a, a customer wait on my site while I deliver the email to them for me to send my response back to their browser, I say, thank you very much for providing your contact information. And I, in the background, I queue up a job. Um, you definitely want, will want to do that uh, with a lot of um, you know, processing intensive uh, actions. And so this is probably an early first step. Uh, run Heroku add-ons add Redis green, which, which is what you would do to get this add-on. Um, the configuration variable, which is a, uh, that's the connection string for your Redis database, which is already ready to go. That's added to your application, it's exposed to it, and your app restarts. Um, so if you need to add any code to, to use that Redis database or to add in a, a Ruby gem um, for, for rescue, you need to do that as well. But this is like a very quick process. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot with my Redis database here, but you can already see I've got some metrics about my server's health. Um, if I had any slow commands, which I never do, um, they would be there. Um, Again, you've got a full breakdown of slow queries, which never exist. Um, some diagnostic info about your Redis database. And because, uh, because the reason we're using Redis Green is uh, for our background jobs, it's very handy that they have a, uh, this is a, a built-in dashboard for rescue, and that's the job queuing framework. Uh, if we had workers you know, sending out those emails, like I mentioned, uh, we would see the number of workers that are working now, um, how many of those jobs failed, we could retry them, that sort of thing. Um, it's really nice that we didn't have to build all of this ourselves, uh, or worse, not have any of this visibility into it. So you can you know, run one command, push a button, this is done. Um, that's very nice. Um, and if you're pretty handy with Lua and you, you know, you're not, not super happy with uh, you know, Redis out of the box, you can script it with Lua. If you can catch this bit.ly link, there's a really nice post by Redis Green on how you can do this, why you'd want to script your database with Lua. Um, it's great stuff. So moving along. Water break. <coughs> yeah, so we're well into application development at this point. Um, you can use uh, the Heroku logs command to look at maybe the past uh, several thousand lines of logs that you're outputting into your stream, which at this point, uh, you've got requests incoming to a web front end. You've got jobs that are working. And the logs, basically the standard out from all of those processes, is getting collected and multiplexed to one stream, which you can read on, on Heroku. But we don't store that indefinitely. We would have an enormous log volume of everyone's logs and that sort of thing. Um, we, we buffer the last several thousand. You can tail them. That, that's great. <coughs> but you'll want to, you know, for, for, for an application as you near production, you'll want to add an add-on like Paper Trail. We have a number of, of great logging add-ons like it. Um, this is the one I happen to use. It's going to give you that long-term storage. It also has um, really great search uh, capabilities, which you can quickly turn into an alert that's going to email you, text you, uh, page you that sort of thing. Uh, it's got a lot of great integrations with third-party services so that they can parse your logs and maybe put together some metrics based on it or, like I said, uh, wake, you up, wake you up in the middle of the night if uh, you see a certain troublesome log message popping up again and again. Um, let's, again, 
move over to our browser. So we have no searchable events yet. Um, but it's here in either high contrast format. Uh, you'll be able to see your logs uh, in real time as they're coming in from all of your different Heroku processes, like I said. Um, you can search on them here. There are some recommended uh, search queries, like for example, um, the paper trail folks, uh, they know common log messages that are going to be appearing in your Heroku log stream. So they make it really easy for you to search based on that and alert. Um, let's see if you want to create an alert. Yeah. Notify yourself all of these ways. If you use Slack, does anyone use HipChat as well? HipChat? No? Yeah. One person in the back, two, three. Cool. Yeah, we're still on that too. Um, so that's paper trails. Great. Uh, you don't want to leave home without this. This is, this is going to be essential in every one of your, app, every one of your apps. Um, and it's great, again, that you're not uh, building all of this tooling around your logs yourself. Been there and done that. <coughs> While you're getting notified all the time by paper trail, you're seeing a lot of troublesome uh, messages, error messages popping up in your log stream. Uh, every time one of those jobs fails, for some reason, um, that email that you're trying to send out to a customer who wants to get in touch with you for, for more information, it's failing a lot more often than you'd like. Um, it's kind of tough to glean a lot from just one log line. Uh, if you're doing it right and you're not logging everything under the sun, context-wise when something happens um, that's also not going to help you debug very well. Uh, so the next thing that you'll probably want is some way to get visibility into the errors in your application, which are definitely going to happen, especially this stage. Uh, squash them as soon as you can. So add something like bug snag. Let me see how much we got to show you here on a new application. Welcome. That's nice. Uh, yeah, it's Rails. This is new, <laughs> of course, doing it live. Um, so you can see errors uh, chunked up by the type of error here. You can see a live stream of them as they come in. Um, that's always a lot of fun when we're, being, uh, we're having a vulnerability scan run against our application. I can just see all the absolutely bogus errors as they happen. Um, maybe that's just me. <laughs> um, yeah, with some of the great things about bug snag in particular is it gives you specific insight into errors that are totally new. You've never seen them in your application before. It'll tell you when that uh, was first introduced. It will tell you if there's a certain kind of error that just keeps coming up again and again. Um, you could read a list of errors and you know, see the types, see the messages and things like that and, tr and try to make those connections yourself um, or your eyes will bleed. Uh, but bug snag will tell you this in particular because yeah, you're going to do this again and again. So they're saving you that time, saving you that trouble. Um, it's got a lot of great in integrations like Paper Trail, like I said, to uh, keep you uh, apprised of what's happening in your application. It's going to make you sad, but you've got to fix those bugs. It's not in production yet. You know, now's the time. Bug snag or anything like it in our, in our add-ons marketplace is going to be essential. You'll just, you just add it. Just do it. Um, so now that we know uh, our application's not perfect, we've got some errors there. Uh, we were having issues delivering email. Those, some of those jobs are failing. But also some of our requests are starting to slow down for some reason as well. Uh, we could spend a lot of our time at this stage in development um, figuring out why that is. Well, what mistake did we make? Which of our queries are slow? Um, are we not taking advantage of caching in the right places? Um, you know, beyond bug snag, the next thing you'll want to do is get some really serious uh, monitoring and visibility for the application. And for that, I recommend New Relic. Um, this is going to tell you in a lot of ways at a high level, and, and you can drill down quite deep, how is your application doing? And you'll want to know this sooner rather than later. So um, you may as well add this add-on. It starts it free. Um, without really much setup, without having to configure you know, like dump all sorts of metrics to your logs and then roll them up and then display them in a dashboard. Either do that yourself or uh, hopefully at least with Labrado. Uh, this is going to tell you 
a lot about your application, regardless, I mean, almost regardless of the stack. They, they support you know, Ruby, Rails apps, Node.js, PHP, Java, that sort of thing. Uh, so they probably have you covered. And they're going to tell you things about your app and its problems right away. So again, you run one command or you click a button, you're off to the races. Already you're learning, wow, that page is slow because most of what's taking place is in the database. I have an extremely slow query. It will show you that query that's very slow as well. Uh, <laughs> yes, right down to that regrettable SQL statement. Uh, and it's at, at the highest level, it's going to present these, uh, these metrics to you in, in, in a way that your users care about. They have an AppDex score, um, which is geared towards the, the time either in the browser or, in, or on the back end uh, that it's taking for responses to get to your customer. Um, I personally, for the, for the sites that I'm responsible for that have web front ends, um, I'm paged anytime. This, this value gets below you know, a satisfactory level. Uh, that means, you know, who knows what's going on in the application. I'll use the rest of New, New Relic to drill down into that, see where the problems are. But at first, I know the problem is my customers are having a hard time getting, you know, getting pages to respond to them in a, in a way that makes them want to stick around. And that's a real problem. Um, beyond that, you can set up, uh, sort of in a way, like in Google Analytics, you can set up key transactions, and these are uh, very important actions in your system. Maybe that's um, that transaction is I submit my contact info on that home page. I want that to respond quickly. Um, we can keep track of in all um, how that's performing as a specific key transaction. Uh, so that's very nice about New Relic. Um, wow, we've come pretty far. Uh, now we're, we're getting ready to go into production. And how many of you, um, you manage production services where people depend on that being up all of the time, uh, and they have visibility into that? They can go to a status site and say, aha, they've got an issue. How many of you have a status site like this? OK, great. Uh, was not super common until, until recently. Uh, and if you're like Heroku, uh, we kind of rolled our own solution for for servicing these uh, you know, status incidents and, and our uh, track record of uptime, that kind of thing. Uh, that took a bit of time to put all of that together. Um, nice thing about that, as you know, is that if we need to add any features to it, we can. But really, it took quite a bit of time. So there is a very quick solution for, for those of us who, didn't have, who weren't exposing that to our customers or just didn't have the time to build it ourselves, that kind of thing. Uh, you can add the status page add-on um, with one command or one click. And from the start, um, you have something to show your customers. You can add a custom domain. If not, it's already good to go. You can expose it to them at a, at a subdomain. And uh, you know, this, is, this, is, this is better than having absolutely no visibility into that, right? Uh, they're up even when you aren't. So, uh, you know, if your application can't be reached at all, you have somewhere, that the, even if someone finds it by Googling around, they can get some answer from you. And they're not, you know, tweeting at you angrily, I, I don't know what's wrong with your site, this is the worst. As soon as it's back up, I'm deleting my account, you're not getting my business anymore. Um, that's a worst case scenario, but even if you've got some planned maintenance coming up, this is another way that you can service that as well. Um, and for people who are really interested in, in your uptime, they can subscribe to your status. There's RSS feeds, things like that. You can link to your Twitter. So if you have a status Twitter that's kind of tied to that, it will do that as well. And the nice thing, especially because this is a Heroku application we've attached this to, is that in the status page, you can add in shared components that aren't necessarily uh, things that you own. Uh, but you know, for example, Heroku. Um, sometimes Heroku's downtime is is also your downtime. It's not a matter of I can't use the dev tooling. My application is is you know unreachable. While that's rare, you'll want to be able to uh, easily surface that on your status page. And this is not an update that you're posting that says there's a problem with our upstream provider. They're the worst in the world. We'll keep you updated. But it shows you you know sort of in a sidebar. Uh, you know, we're having issues with something we depend on. Let's see what we got. Uh, okay. Slow. 
So this is what we first see when we've just added status page. It's going to walk you through getting it all set up. There's some example components. Um, they suppose that we've got a backing API and a management portal. I didn't add any of that. You can feel free to toss it and add your own. But they also have our web host here, and that's, that's what I mentioned about shared components. Um, this is uh, your customers seeing you know, your upstream providers, the issues they're having. Um, and perhaps the reason you've not put a page up like this is because you just don't have the time or the resources or the, the know-how personally um, to make it look good so that when people are coming to a page to find out that you're down hard, um, they at least say, and this happens all the time. I, I keep an eye on Twitter whenever we have incidents. Uh, you know, I'll search by Heroku and I'll see people say, you know, man, there's, they're having some trouble today, but, uh, but their status page looks great. <laughs> so at least you, you've got some, you know, some positive feelings there if that's the, the least you can do. Um, they give you some you know, defaults out of the box, that sort of thing. So we can just accept that and continue. Email's invalid. What's this? Ah, of course. Uh, I wonder if this is it. I don't know. It's not. Email's already been taken. Bizarre. OK. <laughs> All right, so once you've used this, you're going to understand this is essential. Um, this is going to save you so much time and also some frustration on the part of your users. This application is in production now. This is no joke. Um, just do yourself a favor and add the add-on, get that going, configure it. It's going to take you five minutes. For some reason, it was not working for me, but demos, you know how that goes. Um, yeah, so we're in production now, and good luck with that customer app, right? <sighs> All right, uh, at this point, I'll take questions. Like, does anyone have anything for me about the add-ons? Oh, over there. Sorry, it's hard to hear. Uh, is there a, there's a, a microphone in the center. Sorry about that. How reliable this uh, add-ons are to be used at an enterprise level, especially from the data security perspective? How reliable are they? Oh, so um, if they're if they're in general availability, you'll see some add-ons that are in beta. They're still uh, working out their their kinks, if you will. You can know that those may not necessarily be uh, worthy of you know your production application relying on them, but they're nice to test out and kind of keep an eye on them experiment, um, you know, maybe you'll use them later on in a, in a, in a production application. Uh, but if it's not in beta, then it's in what we call general availability, and we vetted those to make sure that you can rely on those even at an enterprise scale, uh, as our enterprise customers do today. So, thank you. Any other questions? Sorry, polite. No? Okay. Um, well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you coming by to hear me talk about Heroku add-ons. I hope you enjoy the rest of Dreamforce, and have a great one. <laughs>